permanent year-round tenant here at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, is Sonex Aircraft. And we're here to talk with Mark Schabel about the company, its origins, and how it relates to customers and what its products have that no other products have. Mark, thanks for spending some time with us today. Tell us a little bit about the origins of Sonex Aircraft and where these designs come from. Well, thanks for having us, Paul. Um, Sonics Aircraft is uh, founded by John and Betty Monet. Uh, John founded Monet Experimental Aircraft back in the early 1970s when he came out with the Sonar I-1 Formula V Racer. And it was really a revolutionary aircraft. Basically, was his way of getting into air racing, and it turned out that a bunch of people wanted to build it, too, when they saw it here at Oshkosh in the early 70s. They made a business out of it, and the following years uh, had aircraft such as the Monterey Sailplane, the Moni Motor Glider, the Monex Racer that still holds two world records. And everyone was struggling. Unfortunately, the Monets uh, had a little hiatus from the aviation business, but we had an opportunity to get back in the business um, 11 years ago with Sonics Aircraft. The business we have now is uh, based around affordable kit aircraft designs. We pride ourselves on having the best performance per dollar in the industry today. Now let's talk about how the current product line goes back somewhat to those early days in the 70s because you have two distinct sides of the business. There's the airframes and there's the Aero V engine and that kind of uh, brings it all full circle to where it all started. That's right. The airframes that we have today draw on a lot of the lessons of the past designs, particularly the Monix Racer. That was the granddaddy of all the airplanes that we're flying today when it comes to the design of the aircraft, the lifting body shape of the fuselage, how we approach things with very simple and very strong construction methods that it's also easy to build. And the Aero-V engine was an engine developed by John from early on when he had had experiences with other VW conversions. And there were always things that he didn't like things that he felt that could be improved upon, and he's been developing the Aero-V for over 40 years. The major difference today is that back in uh, the 70s and 80s, the Aero-V was offered as conversion parts, and you could, you could get your own core parts, and you could put our Aero-V conversions on it. Well, when a customer takes an engine out of the junkyard that should have stayed there, uh, and then you have a forced landing with an engine that says Aero-V all over it, that isn't too good for anybody involved. So now we have one complete engine conversion package that's sold complete. All of the parts for the Aero-V are brand new, zero-time parts, and they're all in production in large quantities for the aftermarket racing world. All right, well, we're going to take a, a brief break, but we want to get shown around here, and you can show us what goes into these aircraft. All right, sounds good, Paul. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Well, we haven't suddenly gone to Steak and Shake or some little diner in Oshkosh. We're here in the Hornet's Nest Cafe, which is actually inside the hangar at Sonex Aircraft. Mark, tell us about this, this room. Well, this is kind of the world famous, uh, if you will, Hornet's Nest Cafe, and it's something that, that John Monet kind of put together back when he first built this hangar, and he was restoring Cubs and Vagabonds. It's kind of the gathering place for all the local airport people uh, at lunchtime. Basically started out where they would be over here complaining about the airport manager at the time, and that's so it was a hornet's nest of conversation that they were kicking up every time they got together, so that's where we got the name. Later on, then translated really naturally into our hornet's nest, research and development facility because, you know, Lockheed has their skunk work, so we had to have our hornet's nest. All right, let's talk briefly about the, the various aircraft lines because they all have similarities, but they're distinct in their, in their specific missions. Tell us about the difference. Well, the Sonics, uh, it was the first aircraft to come along and was the first designed. Basically, it was designed originally to conform with European Microlight standards because there was a request for that, and that was the original uh, design specification and what we were, the market we were going for. It was actually designed to be in production in Europe for that purpose, so it really drove a lot of what we did with how we did the plans and the level of detail that the plans are drawn in. It just happened that the Microlight standards were the model used for the United States Sport Pilot 
regulations, and that happened to work out really well for us. The Sonics is a two-place, all-metal, side-by-side seating sport plane, and it offers incredible performance. It's an aerobatic aircraft. We have always believed that even if you don't want to do aerobatics, it's nice having all that safety margin of an aerobatic-capable airplane. All of our aircraft have the philosophy of just being dirt simple. They need to be very simple, reliable, they need to work. There's only so many weekends in a year, and a lot of them are filled up with birthdays and holidays, and you don't have a lot of time to be tinkering and messing around with, uh, with a complex aircraft uh, when all you're doing is flying for recreation. After the Sonics came along, we built the YX and the Xenos motor glider. The YX is just simply a Sonics with a Y tail on it, or many people say a V tail, but if you look at it closely, it has the little stub rudder on the bottom, which is why we call it a, a Y tail. There's really no reason for it other than the fact that we love how it looks. The YX reflects the heritage of the earlier Monad experimental designs, such as the Moni motor glider, the Monterey sailplane, and the Monix racer especially, and it's just something that we're passionate about, having an exotic, cool-looking airplane. It flies exactly the same same as a Sonics. You need a rear view mirror to tell which one you're flying. We came out with the YX because we love it and we knew that some other people would too and that we'd sell some. The Xenos motor glider is exactly that. It is a 24 to 1 glide ratio sailplane that is self-launched. It's also aerobatic. It's a 6G airplane when flown single pilot just like the Sonics and the YX. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Mark, let me ask you about the development that goes on behind the scenes before these models come out. I think a lot of people look at the Sonex and the WayX and the Xenos and they think it's kind of like the same airplane, but there's got to be a little more to it in diversifying your model line than just putting a different tail on it or a, a little bit different prop or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. We're very, very active in research and development, and we're very proud of the amount of engineering and R&D that goes into these aircraft. This is our research and development facility, and this is where we build all the factory prototypes, including the subsonics jet. This is where we'll be building the 1X prototype and eventually the electric sport aircraft prototype, and where we've been doing all of the development on the E-Flight Initiative electric project. It's basically just a shop with a bunch of tools. Um, you can see on the walls here we have some trophies, if you will, in our destructive load test wings for the Sonics and YX wing panel, which is the same wing, and the Xenos wing panel as well. All the aircraft are designed to FAR Part 23 standards, even though we're not doing type certification of the aircraft, because we believe in those standards and that they're good engineering standards, and so they're thoroughly engineered. We have airplanes that have a very wide safety margin. We thoroughly believe that these are some of the strongest home-built kit aircraft that you can build today, particularly when it comes to metal aircraft. Now you mentioned that, that John has been working on the Aero V for essentially for 40 years if you count the time he watched other people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. What kind of ongoing research is, is going into the engines and power plants or is that pretty much a, a fixed uh, point right now? Oh no, it's not fixed at all. Uh, the Aero V is always being uh, developed. We reserve the right to refine our products continually and that's what we're doing. Particularly with the Aero V, the whole Aero Conversions product line is uh, probably one of the most exciting parts of our business when it comes to the Aero V, what we're doing with it when it comes to ignition technologies, things with the AeroCarb uh, line of products which is sold for a multitude of different engines including being used on the Aero V. Uh, there's a lot of things we're working on being actively developed and of course the E-Flight Initiative products will ultimately more than likely be aero conversions products when they make it to the marketplace.